Hello and welcome to this special presentation of City Weddings here on News Channel 9. I'm Kagan Harshman. And I'm Major Novel as we're coming to you from 150 Sunset, one of the city's wedding venues. And the show is all about weddings. For the next 30 minutes we'll have everything you need to know from selecting the right ring to picking the perfect venue and how to pay for it all within a budget. And we start with a look behind the title of the show, The City Weddings. A wedding segment has been part of the City Magazine for the past two years, but the feature has grown so popular that this year the team knew it could be its own issue. This magazine has been in preparation for about six months, and probably my tenure of magazines, this is my favorite magazine. The 232-page publication is full of advice and ideas, from the flowers and cake to the venue and hairstyles. There is nothing that you will have at your wedding that you won't expect to see in this issue. And one of the things that we've done is we've handpicked and we've put the cream of the crop, if you will, and the best El Val Paso in this piece. As with any other City Magazine issue, the content is completely local. You can expect some amazing wedding dresses from right here in El Paso. All of the shots that you see were shot here in El Paso. Pictures in the publication illustrate what that big day could look like. But it's the experience and feeling those pages could provoke that the magazine is hoping for. One of the things that I think is very important about this magazine as you flip through is I want people to fall in love. I want them to remember that fairy tale feeling and I hope that when they get done with this they are like I am. They're a hopeless romantic and they believe in love. That's what we want from this magazine. To help launch the issue, infamous event planner David Tutero has flown in. With an event developed around him and his expertise, attendees participated in a question and answer session that even included a surprise proposal. Plans are already in the works for next year's edition and launch. When it comes to planning a wedding, it can be overwhelming, and that's to say the least. From selecting a day and a venue to the number of guests, the details of the reception, it's a lot to keep track of. We get some helpful advice from expert wedding planner David Tutera. It happens in a flash. Once you say I do, all the planning for a wedding begins. A wedding day that's envisioned many times before the actual proposal. Every girl has thought about their wedding. Whether it's been since they were five or whether it was a week before the ring went on their finger. Decisions like what the dress will look like, where and when the wedding will be, and invitations. It can easily turn from bliss to stress. But there are three tips that one master planner shares. So my top three things I would tell a bride-to-be is when they get engaged, to take a step back and remove themselves from the beginning of planning. They get too overwhelmed. So avoid being overwhelmed. Two, avoid getting every bit of information and advice from everyone who thinks they should give it to you. So therefore, pick a group of people, perhaps three, and those are those key people to go to support you. And the last thing is to learn how to truly become a guest at your own wedding. That's a hard thing to do. Tara suggests hiring a wedding planner to alleviate the stress and to navigate a budget. The job, he says, isn't easy or comes with overnight success. You have to be very creative and you have to be very focused on business. And a lot of people can't do both and I'm not sort of patting myself on the back. But the reality is, is that you need to be able to wear both hats at the same time. And I think that many people don't realize that and that's when it becomes hard to do. When asked how he orchestrates so many different visions, his answer? also serves as advice. The only way to do that is to sort of listen, that's the key word, is listen to what the bride is wishing and wanting. Sometimes they can't communicate it and I have to sort of figure out how to get into their head and pull it out of them. And I think that's the way for me to successfully give them what they want. Before all the planning begins, there is the proposal. Many times it happens at a venue like this one or a place that holds special meaning to the couple. And that moment, though unforgettable, can be nerve-wracking and requires planning. One pair of newlyweds shared their moment of suspense, surprise, and joy. I imagined a moment and I, I didn't, I thought I imagined a perfect moment, but that moment couldn't have been more perfect. It was out of the scope of my imagination. Gabby Heredia often replays that moment in time when her now husband, Danny, asked her to marry him. We had a uh, unexpected trip to the UK for business. Um, and I took it, I took the opportunity 
to try to work out a way to, to work a proposal into that trip. The proposal took some extra planning and definitely required some collaborating accomplices, but it's something this husband and venue owner knows is important. It's really the first real responsibility that the guy has kind of in his marriage. It's his kind of first step towards his marriage. Well, after more than four years of dating, he knew asking for forever had to be special. Guys usually don't think this whole thing through, and what, what I was aware of is that women think about this and dream about this their entire lives, and guys are usually trying to figure it out a couple days before. These newlyweds marked their moment in Paris during an elaborate dinner that ended with a ring under a silver dome instead of dessert. It's their proposal and others that they have been a part of as 150 Sunset owners that has them sharing advice for the future Mr. and Mrs. It has to be something natural that the bride sort of somewhat wouldn't be surprised by. Like for me, well, going out to dinner wasn't such a big surprise, right? Something like that. It's, it's really a special moment. And it's great when it turns out. When, when I saw Gabby's face and, and her reaction, it, it was incredible. It made me feel like, golly, you know, this was well worth the, uh, the time and effort. Very rewarding to me also. With the proposal comes the ring and a long list of important decisions. Will you choose a solitaire? Will you buy a mounted diamond? And what about the shape and size of that diamond? We get some expert advice on this very important decision. When it comes to the wedding, a proposal and the ring start the process, making it official. But buying that forever jewelry can be both expensive and confusing. There's several ways to buy a wedding ring. One way is to buy a wedding ring that's all together. The ring has the diamond in it, and also the semi-mount, which a semi-mount means that it's a ring without the diamond. You heard right, some people care more for the diamond and invest in a solitaire, but others are interested in a really nice band and prefer a cubic zirconium, later investing in the nice diamond. It's kind of like going to 31 flavors and you're picking exactly what you want. Do you want something very white? Do you want just a diamond? Or do you want both? As you can imagine, with so many choices, size, quality, color, and cut, picking a diamond takes time. Going to a jeweler that's backed by experience and education helps. It's not like a TV or a stereo where you go in with a number and say, this is the number, I need this number, and you can compare prices. There's so many different variables. With the popularity of online shopping, some future husbands and wives make their lifetime purchase with a click of a mouse. Experts say that's probably not a good idea. Oh my gosh, we see so many people in here that are very unhappy. There are so many loopholes and things to be careful of that people would never think about. This gemologist advises to compare, try on and be cautious of quality. The best part, many men don't make the purchase on their own anymore. Years ago, men would come in and they would look and choose something. That day is gone. The woman is there, she wants to pick what she wants. That really is a very good idea. Medrano says more couples are buying wedding rings with birthstones in them, like amethyst and sapphire. Now custom work and vintage are also options, but custom work is more expensive and will take a lot more planning. Well, on your special day, you obviously want to look your best as all eyes will be on the bride. That means choosing the wedding dress that's just right for you. In the City Weddings, there is a section dedicated to choosing the right dress for your body type. Experts say that is the key. Everyone is different in shape and size, and highlighting your own features is important. Let's break it down. If your hips and shoulders are aligned and you have a defined waist, the best dresses for you are the mermaid or trumpet. You can also try a v-neck with a flared skirt. If your body is more like a pear, try a ball gown, full skirt, or short A-shaped dress. These types of dresses will balance your body and flatter the upper part of your body. For hips, waist, and shoulders that are aligned, there are three options to help create curves, a drop waist ball gown, a typical ball gown, or empire dress. And a plus size body can be a combination of plus size and another shape. You can try any of the options mentioned or try a fitted gown. Experts say in the end, the important thing to remember is to feel comfortable and confident.
Thank you for watching this special presentation of the City Weddings brought to you by the City Magazine on News Channel 9. And we have much more still to come from the right theme to the perfect venue. What should you consider? Plus, we asked you to be a part of this show by sharing your wedding photos. Your slideshow is later. And you heard from party planner to the stars, David Tutera, but how did he get his start? You'll get to know him next. You're watching the City Wedding Special, only on News Channel 9. You heard from celebrity wedding planner David Tutera earlier in the show, and he is the party planner to the stars, whose work has been recognized in top publications and can be seen on his reality TV show. He's also an author, a designer of dresses, jewelry, shoes, fabrics, accessories, even just created a wedding planning app. But the question we wondered, despite all his wild success, did David Tutera actually always want to be a wedding planner? David Tutera landed in El Paso this past February to launch the City Weddings inaugural publication. The kickoff included a question and answer session with the wedding guru. If you didn't see him then, you may have caught him on cable TV. His talent was first recognized by his grandfather, a florist. I used to work with him from the age of 13, and by the time I was 19, I realized I want to do parties. So the wedding planning thing, really, everyone thinks I do because of the success of my television show. Uh, but I do all events, which is really what makes my world so much more exciting. The excitement dates back to the age of 19 when Tutera opened his first business. The entrepreneur says he always envisioned success. It just took a while to realize. It was a work in progress. It wasn't until probably 10 years into doing what I was doing, I realized, oh, wait a minute. I think I have got something special here. Tutera says one of his special talents is having the ability to wear different hats, especially as the stress rises during the planning process. Process. I've always said that I am an event planner, I'm a mediator, I'm a referee, I'm a best friend, I'm a therapist. Sometimes I wear all hats at one time and sometimes I have to figure out which one I'm supposed to be. And if I could do that, then it sort of de-stresses the moment. But ultimately, you know, my job is to create a great wedding. You know, if I can bring the drama down and do that, then I feel like I've succeeded. His success has led him to create some memorable moments for star clients, and he's always being sought out. But he has some top names on his wish list. So I've done Barbara Walters to Jennifer Lopez and everybody else in between. Um, but I would, I'm obsessed with uh, doing Jennifer Hudson's wedding and Lady Gaga's. As you can imagine, the event planner spends much of his time making people's happy moments and doesn't get much time off. But it turns out that's what makes him happy. I, I love... I actually just love making people happy. It makes me happy. I think that's why I do so well at creating celebrations. But I mean that in my personal life too. I love making people happy. It makes me thrilled. From the flowers to the catering and of course the dress. Having a wedding can be expensive. Plus picking the perfect place for the party. What you need to know about selecting your wedding venue, that's next. After the proposal comes the planning, and there's plenty of it. Experts say the first thing you should finalize is the venue. Let's look at all the things that are important to a bride in a wedding. You have the dress, you have the cake. You know, when it comes to the event, you've got the music, you've got all of those components, you've got the ceremony, all of that. I think of the venue as kind of like the frame for all of those components. And if you miss on that, then it's gonna have an impact on everything else. That means considering the mood, feel, and experience that you want to create and for your guests to walk away with. Size, services, and resources fall into that equation. Hilton says best practices include getting to know that service staff well. As for mistakes, he sees one in particular all the time. I think the biggest mistake is when people set the date before they have found the venue. Another common pitfall, location. The wedding's close to home. If you're not doing a destination wedding and your wedding is, is in your city, don't limit yourself to maybe your neighborhood that you're comfortable with. So don't base your decision on selecting a venue because it's across town. You know, this is, a, this is kind of a once in a lifetime experience. So if your guests have to go to another part of the city um, because it's a venue that you love, then so be it, it's your day. 
There are many things that come with a wedding celebration that can quickly add up. Hilton suggests staying within your means, and he offers residence or public space festivities as some low-cost alternatives. He says if you decide on an outdoor wedding, you need to have a plan B, and in any instance, be aware that low cost may mean higher personal commitment. Keep in mind, when you go that direction, what's happening is the bridal party is going to be taking on more responsibility for things like the catering and the decor and the floral and all of that. So there's kind of a checks and balances when you're making those decisions. Well, once the venue is set and the wedding day comes, you want to make sure to capture those special moments. We'll share more of your wedding photos a little later. But first, the cost of a wedding is something that may scare couples. Expert advice on how you can prepare next. You're watching The City Weddings on News Channel 9. A wedding is a very large expense, but it's also a very exciting time in your life. So budgeting is important. Experts say that you need to decide how much you want to spend, how much you can spend, then weigh your options. One option is to establish a savings account specifically for your wedding and be disciplined about putting money into it. And another option would be a loan. Whichever you decide on is a personal preference and based on your individual situation. Both, though, require two things according to experts, commitment and selecting an amount that you're comfortable with. Uh, you don't want to overcommit. So the most important thing is think about what fits in your budget. Sit down with your day-to-day -day expenses, your living expenses. You have to eat, uh, you have to get to work, so your car, gasoline, insurance, any of those things. Keep all of those things in mind and then look for an amount that's comfortable in, in your budget that you can afford that won't get you into trouble after the wedding. If you're thinking about saving, the length of time you save depends on how large a wedding you want. Reaching the goal requires discipline. If you're trying to save, it doesn't hurt to cut out a few of the little luxuries that you have from time to time. So maybe not so much on entertainment or coffees or going out, things like that. You can put that money towards your savings. If taking out a loan to pay for the big day is best, experts urge you to consider your credit score first. When you're borrowing, your creditor is looking for credit score, credit history. Uh, the amount of income that you make, your stability, how long you've been on your job, things of that nature. So those are very important to take into consideration. You'll also want to limit your debt. So if you have a lot of bills, you may want to pay some of those off before asking for a loan. Need more knowledge? Think about utilizing online tools and seminars. Couples capture those special moments on the big day to relive those memories for years to come. Coming up next, we'll take a look at some unforgettable wedding photos sent in by viewers across El Paso and Las Cruces. Those snapshots just minutes away. talked about most all the elements of a wedding, but we can't forget about the pictures that will capture those special moments in time. And we asked you to send in those wedding photos to us, and thank you for sharing those moments with us. Take a look. From 150 Sunset, that's all for the special presentation brought to you by The City Magazine on News Channel 9. I'm Kagan Harsha. I'm Adrian Alvarez. Thanks so much for watching.